Is it too late to get into software engineering in 2024? Is AI actually going to replace software engineers? You will not land a $200,000 a year job at Google three months out of a coding bootcamp. The tech job market is full of misinformation, but I want to talk about where exactly we are right now. I see a lot of misinformation about the tech job market coming from both sides. On one side, sort of being overly positive, pushing this narrative that, oh, you just go to a coding bootcamp for three months, buy my course, and you can get a job at Google making $200,000 a year. And on the other side, being overly negative, talking about this sort of apocalyptic state that we're in and how the tech job market is completely ruined. And ultimately, I think we are actually somewhere in between, but I want to focus a little bit more in this video on the actual facts of the matter and where exactly we are. And I'll also give some of my own opinions as somebody who's worked both as a software engineer and more recently in the tech job interview space, which I think gives me sort of a unique perspective on things. So first, I just want to talk about the state of the job market. And this is a graph from TrueUp on the number of open tech jobs tracking back to 2022. We can see we peaked around April or March of 2022 with nearly half a million open jobs in tech. And now we went on this giant fall off when there were all the layoffs down into 2023. And it just sort of evened out ever since then. And it's been slowly increasing over time. So what this means is for one that we have seen a bit of an increase. So we can see we're up 31.8% from the low, but we are down 55% from the peak. And there are roughly 215,000 open jobs at the time of this filming. So what can we exactly take from this? So I showed this just to give some context on where exactly we are in the market. We are not at the peak anymore. We are not at this place. We were at the peak of COVID. And frankly, we might never be back to that place again, but we are also not at this low anymore. We have recovered a decent bit. And also I think it's important to note that it has flatlined a little bit and just been slowly increasing ever since. And I think this sort of flattening of this curve has shown a bit of stability in the market. That said, of course, this doesn't paint the brightest of pictures of the market because clearly we are down a lot from the peak. However, there are, of course, still jobs in this market. It's also worth noting that the big tech companies specifically are all hiring. So if we come down here to big tech hiring, we can see all of the different companies are actually hiring. Now, are they hiring as much as they were in, say, 2021, 2022? No, of course not. However, all of them are hiring. There are jobs at these companies. And even anecdotally, I personally know multiple people who have gotten job offers from these big tech companies in the last few months. But a caveat to this and something I see a lot of people bringing up is that, yes, there are jobs at these companies, but they're not really hiring new grad and entry level positions. Almost all of these positions that are open require at least, say, three years of experience. They're mid-level and senior level positions. And there is some truth to this. It's not entirely true. There are new grad positions at these companies, but there's certainly an emphasis on hiring more senior developers right now. And frankly, I think this sort of makes sense from a company perspective, because if you're the company and you have the option of hiring a new grad or a senior, you're probably more likely to want to hire that senior. Now, of course, seniors are more expensive to hire. They have higher salaries, but they are also just a lot less of a liability. They're easier to train. They have a proven track record of actually being good at the job. So just overall, they tend to be better hires on average, I think. And I think that's why a lot of companies are preferring to hire those senior developers right now. And this has been going on for a while now, but it's important to note that this is not sustainable. And I don't mean that in sort of like this philosophical way. I mean, it is quite literally not sustainable. So imagine that we were like 20 years in the future and all these tech companies had said, hey, we're just gonna hire senior developers exclusively because they're the best developers. What would actually happen? Well, say 20, maybe 30 years from now, all of the senior developers that we currently have will have been retired. So this means that there would be no more senior developers because if they never hired any junior developers, well, there would be nobody to actually promote up to becoming a senior developer. You have to start as a junior. So quite literally, that would force them to have to start hiring junior developers again. Now, am I saying that this is going to happen or that it is happening? No, absolutely not. I don't think this is actually the reality. I'm just saying that hypothetically, this is what would happen if companies were all like, we are only going to hire senior developers, which I don't think is the case. And I don't think it will be the case. That said, I do think we could see some pretty dramatic changes in how the overall market works. 
For example, we could end up with a system similar to what airlines and pilots have, where most pilots are going to start their careers at these smaller regional airlines, and then they're going to work their way up to the higher paying, bigger airlines like the Deltas of the world. We could have something similar where most software engineers coming out of college or boot camps are going to start at these smaller startups that don't pay quite as well, and then they can work their way up as they get more experience and get those jobs at the Googles and Facebooks of the world. And again, I'm not saying that this is happening or that it's going to happen, just that it is sort of a possibility, it is one potential hypothetical to consider. But thinking sort of more concretely, what exactly should you be doing right now in this current market? Well, first of all, if you are a mid-level or senior developer, lucky you because this market was sort of built for you and it's sort of a standard market, very similar honestly to how it was pre-COVID, maybe not exactly the same, but it is pretty standard and I wouldn't worry too much. But then what about the new grads, the current college students, the boot camp students, or even if you're trying to self-teach? What should you be doing? Well, for a lot of you, you might want to first just consider the question of, should I even go into this industry to begin with? Is it even worth it to go into tech right now, given that AI is improving so quickly and the job market does seem a little bit bleak, at least compared to what it used to be? And starting from the AI front, honestly, I wouldn't be too worried about it. I don't think we are at some place where software engineers are getting replaced, and I don't think we'll be there for a very long time, if ever. And you can see this by looking historically back at other trends we've had in tech. Lots of things have happened that have made software much easier to build. For example, at one point we were using literal punch cards, and then we developed things like high-level programming languages. We developed things like C and C++, and eventually languages like Python that were much easier to write. We also developed things like IDEs that helped us in writing the code itself and tons of other developer tools. And with all of these things, what actually happened? Well, the industry continued to grow and we continued to hire more and more software engineers every single year. And this seems sort of paradoxical. We built all of these tools that made software engineering more efficient. That means maybe one software engineer could do the job of five software engineers in the past. So that should mean that we should have far less software engineers, but that's not actually the case. What this meant was that there were all of these different things that previously we could not build either because they were sort of technically impossible to build with the tools we currently had, or they were just financially infeasible and they became feasible. They became things we could actually build. So we had more and more companies that were coming up and building these new things because software became cheaper to build and it became easier to get into this industry. And I would expect AI to do something similar. It's going to make software much more efficient to build. It's already sort of started to do that, but I don't think that means it's replacing software engineers. I think it just means it's going to unlock lots of new potential for software we can build that previously would have been impossible to build again, either because it was just sort of technically too complex or because it was just going to take too many resources and it wasn't going to be financially viable. Okay. But AI aside, should you get into this field of software engineering? And this might seem sort of surprising, but my answer to this honestly hasn't changed very much since like 2019. It has changed a bit, but for the most part, I have pretty much the same answer. So first of all, I would say if it interests you, follow your passions. Don't let any of these outside factors impact what you actually want to do with your life. I honestly love software engineering. I love what I do. And I couldn't imagine a world where I would do something different. I would be far less happy pursuing a different career. So it just doesn't make sense for me to do that. And if you're in a similar boat, you should follow your dreams. Now, if you're just looking for a way to make some good money, and by the way, there's no shame in that whatsoever, I do still think that going into tech can be a good option. However, I see a lot of people outside of tech and even some inside of the industry pushing this narrative that in say three months, you could learn how to code and then land a job making $200,000 a year at Google. And frankly, this is just very incorrect. It is dangerously bad misinformation. It's just not something that's actually going to happen. It's based in some facts, but it is not a realistic expectation that you can have. For example, this is levels.fyi, which is a very good website to see the different salaries in tech. And in my experience, it's actually pretty accurate. And this is Google's software engineering salaries. And you can see L3, which is their entry level. So this is what a brand new graduate out of college or even a coding bootcamp would get is averaging $197,000 as total compensation with a base salary of 150, 35K in stock and about 11,700 in bonuses. So there is some truth to this idea that a brand new developer can make about $200,000 a year working at Google. And there's also some truth to the fact that you can learn how to code in like three months. There are some coding boot camps that take about that amount of time. And there are lots of programs that you can use to get some level of proficiency in coding in three months. 
these things don't all connect. Just because there are jobs at Google for new developers making $200,000 a year, and just because you can learn how to code in three months, doesn't mean if you learn how to code in three months that you have a high likelihood of getting a job making $200,000 a year at Google immediately after that because that's just not going to happen. Google and all of these companies that pay very well are able to be very picky about who they actually hire because lots of people want to work for Google. So if Google is considering somebody who's been coding for three months or somebody who just got a four-year bachelor's degree in computer science from Stanford, they're going to hire the person from Stanford. That's just the way it's going to be. There might've been a point where all of these companies were hiring so much that the hiring bar fell a little bit and that they were considering different people from all of these different backgrounds. And of course, there are going to be some occasional stories of somebody who goes to a coding bootcamp and then lands that job at Google making 200K. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but the vast majority of the time, it's not going to happen because the hiring bar is very high and they're just going to choose the people who have the most credentials, which are going to be those people with the four-year degrees. Now, again, I'm not saying it's impossible to get one of these jobs at Google because it absolutely is possible, but we just need to have realistic expectations. You're not going to go from never coding to a three-month coding bootcamp to a job making $200,000 a year at Google or any of these big tech companies. It's just not a realistic expectation. Now, maybe with a good work ethic, a bit of luck, and honestly, just being geographically located in the right parts of the United States, you could over time work up to one of these jobs, right? You could go to a coding bootcamp for three months, then maybe spend a few months after that doing some self-study, studying for coding interviews, and then land a job doing some kind of development work. It's probably not going to be a super glamorous job. It's not going to pay astronomically high salaries, but you could land a decent job at that point. And then you might work at that job for a year or two, maybe do some job hopping and eventually end up at one of these Fang style jobs at Facebook, Amazon, Google, etc. But just know it's not a get rich quick scheme. And there's a reason that the vast, vast, vast majority of the software engineers at these big tech companies and all of these very high paying companies in Silicon Valley and New York are coming from bachelor's degrees in computer science at top universities. And that reason is simply because there are enough candidates coming from those places that these companies really don't have to look much elsewhere to do their hiring. So essentially, my point is not to discourage you. If you want to go to a coding bootcamp, absolutely go to a coding bootcamp. If you want to learn to code on your own online, absolutely do that as well. But just note the most straightforward path to getting one of these high paying software engineering jobs is to go get a four year degree in computer science. That's not to say it's the fastest path. That's not to say it's the only path. It's not even to say it's the cheapest path because it certainly is not. But I do think it's the most straightforward path. And if that option is available to you, it's for most people the option I would recommend. It's not the option I'd recommend for everybody, and you need to understand your own circumstances, but for many people, I do think that is still the best option. And again, to be extra clear, there's nothing wrong with going to a coding bootcamp or self-teaching. Just please try to avoid being sold these false promises and false hope and thinking that something's going to happen when it's probably not going to happen in that way. And from a very high level, my opinion is essentially this. First of all, on the AI front, AI is not going to be replacing software engineers anytime soon. And AI being good at software engineering isn't even really a unique thing. AI is good at lots of things. We've just sort of put the most emphasis on software engineering, but I would even argue that in this case of some AI replacement, which by the way would happen very slowly and gradually, it's not going to just be snap of a fingers one day, all jobs are gone. But in that hypothetical scenario, I think software engineering would actually be one of the most resilient jobs because who do you think it is that's making all of these AI tools? It's the software engineers. They're the ones who are needed to build the AI and to integrate it with all these different companies. So I think that we would actually see a lot of replacement in other fields before we would see it in software engineering. And if you're in college studying computer science or at a coding bootcamp or just self-teaching, realize that learning how to code is still one of the most valuable skills in the entire world. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. And the saying goes that comparison is the thief of joy. And it's easy to compare your situation to that of, say, when I graduated college back in 2020, which was much easier to get that first job as a software engineer. But that doesn't mean that you're in some apocalyptic state right now. There are still absolutely jobs, and they are still very high paying jobs compared to basically any other field directly out of college. And of course, there are still software engineers at the very top of it all who are commanding these massive salaries, making sometimes north of 500,000 or even a million dollars a year. If you're curious about what exactly it is that they do differently, you should watch this video next.